Greetings everyone, and welcome back to a phone review. Not just any phone review. This is going to be a first for the channel. I'm actually going to be reviewing two phones at the same time. Technically I'm going to be reviewing one phone, but there's slight differences between the two. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but just stick with me for this one. What I'm going to be taking a look at are some more cheapo devices bought from AliExpress, and these were picked out by you folks on one of my last live streams. I don't remember which one because I've done several of them since. You folks generously donated to seeing these servo devices reviewed on the channel, so thanks to these folks displayed on screen for donating during that stream. I really, really do appreciate it, and these are the last items from that stream that we picked. Everything else has been reviewed, so the mini PC and the Nokia 57 and 10 clone have both already been reviewed and then these are the last two. Now you folks were very enthusiastic about the mini retro PC thing but I think you were also very enthusiastic about the phones that I'm about to show you in this video today. Let's get into this very very strange video and let me try and do two phone reviews at the same time. Uh, wish me luck with that. If you don't think that I'm going to be doing too well with this feel free to use the timestamps in the description as well as the pinned comment and integrate it into the video along the you know little play area slider thing to skip past certain segments if you want to skip straight to where I'm looking at the phones or whatever and you don't want to hear the listing because I'm going to be taking a look at the listing. The listing is very, very important. There are some key features that we need to go over. So it's completely understandable if you need to skip past them. Let's set the scene for the two phones that we're going to be taking a look at. Starting with the Servo P24 SIM card flip mobile phone, speed dial, magic voice, LED flashlight, MP3, FM radio, 2.4 inch HD screen, GSM unlocked cell phone. And currently this is $33.50 with free shipping on AliExpress right now. But these are the Black Friday super deals. So they'll probably go back to the regular retail price. Let's just take a moment to pause and have a look at the design of this. This is basically like that Flea Joe or Flea Low phone that I took a look at a couple of months back, which was the fake Galaxy Z Flip 4. Well, this is the same thing, except this is if an iPhone was made into a cheap 2G folding phone, this is what it would look like. But can we not ignore the obvious fashion moible? I think everyone on stream wanted to see these because it says fashion moible. Actually, that's one of the reasons. There's another reason why. Apart from that, though, it's fairly standard and cheap looking, and I've already unboxed these, and I can tell you they're very cheap devices. For the P20, the specifications just say it's a P20, 2.4 inch HD screen. The phone size being 156 by 66 by 9 millimeters, 93 grams including batteries for the phone weight, 1200 milliamp hour battery. The camera just says rear camera, which is exactly the same description that was given on the Servo R25 Pro, it just says rear camera. Four SIM card slots and one micro SD card slot, 32 megabits of RAM and 32 megabits of ROM or 32 megabytes of RAM and 32 megabytes of ROM, not too sure. And the maximum support is 32 gig, but it does take a 64 gig micro SD card. Networks is just 2G GSM and nothing more. Now the features for the P20, I'll display on screen. There's not too much to really talk about here. We've got all the same features that were on the Z Flip 4 clone, you know, the torch and all that sort of stuff. No secondary screen on them, just the main screen when you unfold it. This does have magic voice, but I won't be able to test these because... 2G is completely dead here in Australia, and so is 3G now. But this can serve as a portable radio, rich content, loud sound. You can choose your favorite program to listen to, which means in this one, there'll be a dual big spurker test. So stay tuned for that. And more practical features, calculator, calendar, games, alarm clock, Bluetooth recorder, etc. Both practical and convenient. I'm sure they are, if they work. Lastly, I just wanted to also show you these reviews on AliExpress for the P20. Just have a read of them, especially the first one with the picture of someone just sort of standing there leaning against a railing. When it comes complete, it comes broken. Please, we will not crucify the seller. Okay. And uh, the second one says that it is a device for those who just want to make voice calls and receive torpedoes. So if you had a reason to purchase one of these, um, you will receive a torpedo if you buy this because it's not a smartphone. Moving on, because that's all of the information for the P20. But let me show you the listing for the P21, because there's a couple of funny pictures that I need to show you all. If you want to check these for yourselves, I'll leave the links in the description below so you can go take a look at them. They're not affiliate links or anything like that. It's just if you want to see the advertising, because I don't want to show every single photo. So if you just want to go there and have a look, feel free. But the P21 Pro is called the Servo P21 Foldable Flip Mobile Phone for SIM card auto call recording speed, dial magic voice, flashlight, blacklist, 2.4 inch telephone. And currently this is $33.60. 65 cents with free shipping on AliExpress, also a part of their Black Friday super deal thing. So yeah, both phones were $33.50 roughly. So add those together and you get $67, which now I can display a very crappy currency conversion chart to just tell you how much they cost in America and Canada and stuff. But hey, these are cheap devices. We can't expect too much out of them because this listing absolutely guarantees us that they're cheap devices. The specifications in the listing are basically the exact same thing, except this has a note saying this only supports 2G GSM network services, which means 
Bonds. This phone cannot be used in countries such as Japan, South Korea, Canada, etc. Please check before ordering. Thanks. They should have put Australia because, um, you know, we've been out of the 2G game for a while, but all of the specifications are exactly the same as on the P20. So nothing to really note here. In the features, they've put some bolder fonts and they've kind of organized this to look a little better. So the P20 is from the official Servo store and the P21 is from another store. So obviously this other store has made it all fancier and stuff. But this other store, they decided that they should use the best pictures in the listing. Sorry, I forgot the reviews. Um, here you go. Super Trop Mignon. That'll become part of my normal lingo from now on. This is the Servo P21. Foldable mobile phone. Four SIM card. Four standby. Foldable phone. All that sort of stuff. Fashion mobile. It's on both of them. How they stuffed that up and made a phone into production without fixing that little error, I have no idea. Chinese engineering right there for you, I guess. The two colorways, Crystal Diamond White and Obsidian Black. So the P20 I've got in black and the P21 I've got in Crystal Diamond White, which is, ooh, fancy. 2.4 inch HD screen. High definition large screen. Clearer picture quality without eye damage. And it's also an HD screen. All right. So we're all on the same page now. Because the LED flashlight is a strong flashlight with one click on the side button. Convenient and fast. Fearless of dark night travel. Can say the torch does work well. I'll show you that soon. High definition camera. Take photos anytime, anywhere. Recording the moments of a beautiful life. Just one camera though. Not three. If we had three, that'd be amazing. But no, it's just one rear camera, which, um, oh, wait till we get to the cameras. Well, that's another rabbit hole in itself. The high capacity battery, 1200 milliamp hour, large capacity battery, long lasting battery life, ultra long standby time, 1200 milliamp hours built straight in there with the lightning bolt. No, oh, it looks sophisticated and it's probably the same guts as the Fleejo 4, but we'll see. Ultra thin, super light. The phone weight only 93 grams and there is no sense of weight when held in hand after folding the phone. I'm glad that makes sense too. But the one picture that makes all of this worth it is right here on screen. The flimsy flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> the flimsy flip phone. The phone adopts a streamlined ergonomic design with a 180 degree rotation angle for easy grip and comfortable operation. <laughs> the fact that they just call this a flimsy, f a flimsy flip phone, it's like, yeah, this thing's as cheap as cheap it can be. Don't expect too much from it. It's a flimsy thing. Great advertising, folks. Well, well done. A for effort. Good job. That's all that I want to show you in the listing. As I said, feel free to check the links in the description if you want to have a browse of all of the photos that they do have in the listing. Most of the ones in the P21 are broken English. P20 has mostly good English for the most part. So now that that's out of the way, usually I'd show me getting them out of the package and stuff like that, but I've kind of already opened them and I've had a look around them and stuff like that. So let's just go straight into the unboxing. So here we have the P20 and the P21, both say fashion moible. One's gold and one's black and white. I didn't get gold in that, I got black in that, and that's the right colorway, I think. Around the sides, it's just all plain. Top is plain, sides is plain. But the bottom, here we have all of the IMEIs for the P20. If you want to pause the video and have a look and see where these have been taken from, feel free. And then I'll move to the P21 once again. Feel free to pause the video and see where these have been pinched from. Probably some random devices out there that are no longer in service, most likely. And now flipping to the bottom, shows us all the different models of the device. And they're actually not all the same. You get four colorways with the P20, three colorways with the P21. Both have the same specifications with big battery. Of course, it's a big battery and HD camera, very much HD camera. Um, and TF as well, just, just TF there. Thank fuck. You get thank fuck with both of them. Great, awesome. Unboxing them reveals the phones in all of their glory. So we grab both of these out. And the only accessories that you do get in these are just a micro USB cable and the user manual. It's a tiny little instruction manual that tells you some basic things on three pages. Really good instructions. That's basically the unboxing experience. There's nothing much to them. We're interested in the devices themselves. Alrighty, so here they both are. Now for most of this review, P20 will be on the left, P21 will be on the right. But in the camera test, things will be the other way around. Here they both are. So the P20 has the 4SIM digital camera with some little icons just there that do light up. The three rear cameras, which one's real? Of course, it's that one there. And we have an LED flash on there too, which is cool, but the plastic is just glossy and a fingerprint magnet. I apologize for all the fingerprints that will get on this thing. The P21 has a better feel to it because of this textured sort of thing to it. And it's ripping off a Huawei Pocket, I believe. I think it's called the Huawei Pocket, their flippy phone that they've made. And this also has the notifications on the front there and the three rear cameras, but of course that one's real with the LED flash. Around them is just shimmery, shiny, cheap gold plastic with a whole bunch of fingerprints on them, but just ignore that. Uh, the hinges are the same. On the side, we have the buttons for the torch, which if you press them that away, both of them switch on 
and are a little something like that. These are very, very bright. Allow me to splice in some footage of showing you how bright these are. All right, I'm outside and I've made this contraption. I've sandwiched the two phones together, not that you can see it, um, but if I switch one of these on, there you go. That's pretty bright from a cheapo device. That's pretty good, but that's only just one though. What if we just stick the other one on? Wow, there you go. <laughs> and now you have the power to see basically, uh, well, quite a distance in front of you, that's for sure. They're very, very, very powerful. The actual LED flashes themselves are pretty useless, but the torches are very, very useful. Uh, yeah, if you want to buy two of these, stick them together um, and charge them up and don't use them as phones, have them closed the whole time, then you have some pretty fancy torches that you can shine around and possibly redirect airplanes, but that's okay. You could do so with your $35 servo devices. Jesus, look at that. You're staring into the sun. Woof. Yes, in that video, I did have them taped together and was walking around my yard just doing this. Powerful torches for the price. That's one use for them. Also, sorry for kind of blinding you from the very bright torches, but both of these have a micro USB port on them, unlike the Flea Joe, which had type C. I will pull out that Flea Joe thing so I can do a quick comparison with these ones. And we also have the microphone on the bottom there as well. On the back, P20 is covered in fingerprints. Once again, apologies for that. But the P21 is all textured and we have a speaker grill there and this piece of black plastic, which doesn't serve any function. Maybe this is for where a brand name would be. So maybe they should have etched welcome into there or well, servo would have been better. And then flipping these open. Okay, originally when I got these, the hinges were squeaking. No, it's just turned into a blinker because I've opened them a number of times, they've worn in. There it is, Fashion Moible. I can't believe that's actually on the real deal, Fashion Moible, with a very, very flat keyboard with Arabic lettering on it. So um, there you go. Look, it's got thumbs up, with four SIM cards, yay. With music player, flashlight, camera, 2.4 LCD. I've already told you all about this LCD so many times now, but at least it's original and it's faster and more stable with a CPU. Doesn't tell me what CPU it is, but I'm sure it's a really good one that's in here. And then the same goes for P21. Yeah, okay. It's a bit squeaky, that one. Needs a bit of WD-40. You wouldn't be able to tell the differences between the two, keypad-wise and screen-wise. So taking off the screen protector reveals the 2.4-inch LCD. I have to say that again. Looking very basic in there. Is that the WhatsApp icon and Facebook? I'm pretty sure they aren't on this device, but okay. And then the second one looks a little something like that. But... We're not finished looking around the devices yet because I have to crack open the back cover of the P20. I should just say the black one and the white one, but I'll just refer to it as P20. Got it. We have a big spurker. Yay. It's, uh, well, hopefully it's a big spurker. There's the IMEI info there with P20 made in China. Of course you are. And the four SIM card slots. And I've already put a two gig micro SD card in with all the files that I need on here because I've already tested most of the important features out on this already. And the P21, these back covers aren't easy to get off, by the way. Got it. Big Spurker, four SIM card slots, two gig micro SD card, courtesy of me. The IMEI sticker is ever so slightly different with P21 right there. And that's basically it going around these. Oh, there's the Big Spurker area. If you're new to this channel and still wondering why I'm calling things Big Spurker, DJ1000 video up there, birthplace of the Big Spurker. So obviously the box is different for the Flea Joe. The fact is we got a 2.6 inch display and it's actually like so. But on these ones, they're like that, which indicates to me that possibly we've got some different hardware. Now the keyboards are both horrendous. You already know how much I hated this keyboard during the review of this. The keyboard on this is pretty much exactly the same. There is some slight textures to them to know which key you are pressing, but for the most part, it's fairly flat. But the D-pad's a circle on that one, whereas the Flea Joe was a square D-pad. The Flea Joe is a much thicker device than the Servo ones. The Flea Joe had Type-C, whereas this has micro USB. Inside of the device looks like that. I'm pretty sure they're using the same motherboards, but things have just been moved around ever so slightly. And well, this one's in a much bigger frame. The camera placement is basically the same on all of them, but the LEDs have been moved around on each unit. I don't need to really come back much to this, but feel free to go watch this video first before watching this. So then you get a good idea of this whole foldable phone universe that we've sort of created. Well, folks, I've bored you to death with an introduction about these two stupid devices for all this time. It is now finally time to show you what these things are capable of doing. The answer is not a lot. Sit back, relax, as I'm about to 
tear your eardrums out. Three, two, one, let's go. Oh, that's a little late to the party. I hope you're having a lot of fun already. I certainly am. That's them, booted up, closing both at the same time. Well, not quite the same time, but you've seen the little LEDs going on at the front there for battery and messaging and all that sort of stuff, which is helpful for someone who needs a basic phone in a country that still supports 2G and they want to see their phone have a notification LED on the front, I guess. But every time you open them, that happens. The keypad lights on these are reasonable. Two, five, and eight are lit up the most, and the other ones are kind of just pretty dim, but they'll do. I guess. Once again, yeah, the, the keyboards are pretty horrible and clicky and stuff, and like you can press two at the same time just there if you mush your thumb in between the two keys there. And I've just typed in six a whole bunch of times, so that's okay. The screen quality, honestly, not bad. They look like probably the same screens that were in the Servo R25, the same quality as that. I mean, these are basic devices with a basic OS on them, so they don't need to be super sophisticated LCDs that they put on here, but they're good for the most part. But if I go to the menu, so we have contacts, messages, call logs, settings, camera, multimedia, audio player, file manager, FM radio, tools, user profiles, and services. That's it. Not a whole lot to look at on these, to be fairly honest. But as I said, since this is a dual phone review, that means I'll be doing everything at the same time. So contacts, looks a little something like that. Not much to see there. Messages, same thing. Not too much to see. Call logs, nothing to see there either. Settings, on the other hand, quad SIM settings. Can't do much there because don't have any SIM cards in. Phone settings, date and time. I can change that if I wanted to, but I'll just leave it. Also, if you're wondering, using two phones at the same time is a little bit sort of um, hard for the brain to handle, but it's okay. I've got this. Language setting, don't want to change it to another language that I won't be able to change it back. Shortcuts are just shortcuts to application. Shortcut keys is just the D-pad shortcuts, flight mode, factory data restore, and that's it. Call settings, advanced settings, blacklist, auto call record. So you can record calls if you wanted to. The magic voice, which sad, I can't test this, but it is what it is. I have tested it before on other devices, but I just wish I would have been able to still showcase them in videos because it's just quite funny. Display settings, wallpaper, we have just one wallpaper on both. Looking at both of these now, I see that the colors are more vivid on the P21 than they are on the P20. P20 is a little darker, whereas the P21 is lighter for the display. That's just from that one image there. If I just look at it normally, oh, actually no, the P20 is slightly darker, but maybe it's because the backlight is, no? Keypad light settings, that's fine. Show date and time, all good there. Security settings, phone lock, mobile tracker, we'll leave that. Auto keypad lock and all that sort of stuff. Oh, you can lock the keypad just like that if you wanted to, so you don't even have to fold these. You can just use them like this. Unlocking them like a good old Nokia. Connectivity has empty in it. Does this not have Bluetooth? Surely they have Bluetooth, unless it's talking about networks. LED settings is just telling me all the stuff that will happen for the LEDs. You can't have them on all the time though. They just only trigger when you close the phone and get phone calls and all that sort of stuff. But that's it within settings. But camera is where we're gonna have a lot to look at. All right, so let's open up the camera. Straight away, you might be thinking to yourself, hang on Smalls, I see a difference. And you are seeing a difference. One camera is better than the other. So try and explain that. So let's get a 1982 Toyota JDM van just there on the P20. Looks a little something like that, which it's fairly reasonable. But now if I come to the P21, it looks zoomed in and the quality is absolutely garbage. I mean, the quality is garbage on both of them, but it's worse on the P21. So they haven't put the same camera module in both of these. They've put different ones in. Try and work that out. Because if I go to options, switch to video recorder, which I'll go back to very soon. Photos, shows all the photos that I've taken with this. Camera settings has the LED torch, which I'll show you them soon. We've got the shutter sounds, which are nothing exciting. Anti-flicker, scene mode, white balance, delay time, and continuous shot, and that's about it. But if I leave the flashlights on, there they both are there, and they're very, very dim. This one lights up the entire camera area. So when you're trying to take a photo, it's just kind of all washed out from the LED flash sort of bleeding into the camera area. But the P20 looks a little something like that and both of them don't do much. Image settings is 320 by 240. So we don't even have a VGA camera inside of this. It's 0 0.1 megapixels, which means good quality with both, correct? Yeah, cool. And if we switch to video recorder, same thing. If I grab the Toyota van again, see on the P20, I mean, it's like three FPS, but you know what I mean? And then P21 zoomed right in, and it's just 
yeah, it looks pretty bad. In video settings, we've got video recorder settings, which is just anti-flicker. And we also have video settings, which is set to high on both of them. So for the camera test, I will have the P21 on the left and the P20 on the right. I'll have all the information displayed anyways during the camera test, but doing a dual phone review means we've got to do a dual camera test. So folks, sit back and relax and watch the quality of the cameras from both of these devices. Well, this is the dual video test for both of the servo devices. So I'm gonna have these on screen at the same time and display both of the bit rates for them. Uh, as you can see, the one on the left is absolutely terrible. The one on the right is acceptable. And if we go for a bit of a close up there, I don't know how many FPS that is, but the one on the right is very, very blurry on the edges, but the center looks okay. The one on the left looks, uh, well, pixels. <laughs> That's all. Um, I recently got all my flowers cut away, so I don't have anything to show you really. There's Ripley there. Um, you can see her meowing at me. She's been outside today, um, but it's starting to rain now, so I kind of have to be careful. And look at her just, yep, yeah, okay. Three Muppets there. Looking good on the right, looking, uh, well, you know, as they are on the left there. The Hidden Fellas. Yes. Brick Wall. Yes. <laughs> uh, Stuart and Mick. Yes. Lemons everywhere. There's lemon. And someone doing a massive burnout. Cool. Um, oh, someone moved Zenny. My gardener must have done that. But uh, that's Zenny there. Looking good. There's the sky there. Looking nice. But what about a digital zoom? No digital zoom on either units. That is as far as you go. And now it's time for a Ripley video. Let's see which one looks better. Which one looks better, Rip? One on the left or one on the right? I, I think that means I don't care. Well, we got a flop at least. There we go. Uh, which loaf looks better? The one on the left or the one on the right? I can't quite tell. <laughs> no, the one on the left looks terrible, but uh, when I go for these on my PC, they may be completely different, but... Hello. Hi. Yeah, well, you lick your toes then. Alrighty, you've just seen the quality of the photos and videos that I took with these devices. What did you think of them? They were pretty good, weren't they? Well, okay, let's give credit to the P20 for taking the best photos and slightly better videos at 7.51 frames instead of 7 frames a second on the P21. Yeah, it's just different cameras. I thought they would have been the exact same camera that's in these, but no, it's not. It, they're slightly different. So when I get to the teardown, I definitely want to see what's the deal with those cameras. P20 being the clear winner in this one. Not by much, though. They're pretty low-end cameras. I mean, for a $35 device, they have a camera. That's more than you can ask for really. So this likely has a slightly better 0.1 megapixel camera in it. That's very odd to be saying in 2023. It has a better 0.1 megapixel camera in it. Yep, sure. All right, we're moving on because we don't have too much left. In multimedia, we just have the images that I took with these, which I didn't hold them side by side. I've done it individually. The video test was side by side though. Yeah, you can see a clear winner there. P20, P21. Just agree with it. Video recorder, we've already been through. Video player,
which you get the point. Then we have sound recorder, which looks the same on both of them, but you've already heard the microphone quality, so I don't need to go back through there. But here is the big spurker test. Oh boy. BFG division of both of these devices. Prepare yourselves, folks, because this, this is going to be an experience. But first we'll need the sound meter. Get you prepared. With both of them at the absolute highest volume, I'm going to try and have the audio synced together. So here we go. Three, two, one. That's pretty good. So like for a surround experience, you know what I mean? So you have one phone on one side of the room, one phone on the other side of the room, and you got cheapo stereo speakers, man. It's pretty cool. This is the big Spurka test. They're the same speaker, same quality. Definitely not the best quality. Even though they are big spurkers, they don't qualify for being called big spurkers, unfortunately. If I play it sort of slightly lower. Okay, they're out of sync now. Just stand alone. I'll just bump this up. Yeah, it's fairly average. But it was fun doing the dual non-big Spurka test. So yeah, that's the speaker test on these. There's not really many interesting features about these devices, to be fairly honest. It's just they're called fashion moibles, and they look like, what if an iPhone was a foldable? and this already exists in the world. So anyways, moving on to file manager, the phone memory is, let's see what it is, 16K. So I would say that it's actually four megabytes of internal storage and not 32 megabytes. So it'd be 32 megabits with 15K free because you need to have a memory card in these to actually take photos or do anything on. Uh, you may have also noticed one thing. There's no games on here, none whatsoever. So I tried to install Doom RPG, but both of them just say that. I may need the JAD file to be able to install them, but unlikely, I don't think it would work. Next up is FM radio, which means everybody get yourselves ready because we've got to do part two of the big Spurker test. It's not big Spurkers, what am I talking about? Let's find a radio station. Uh, what's playing on Australian radio at 11.10 p.m. on a Friday night? Okay, one is playing static and one is playing music. That doesn't sound too bad. There you go, I'll give you the stereo experience. Nice. Can't play too much because of copyright, but let's see if we can find the freaky radio station. Oh. Okay, it's a real head trip. When you point the speakers directly at your ears, you can hear the music playing in your head. That sounds like I'm high on something, but uh, trust me, it's pretty cool. Music sounds better with you. If it plays them. Oh my God, Stairway to Heaven. If you play them backwards, you get a satanic message. Fun fact for you all. And FM settings is just manual input, auto search settings. You can record the radio if you wanted to. Background play, audio quality low. Wait, what does audio quality high sound like? Same thing. Sounds slightly better, actually, not gonna lie. Anything else we can do in there? File list, no, that's it. Actually, can you play this and close it? You can, so you can have this in your pocket. 
playing the FM radio. The, the reception's pretty terrible, but you know. While we don't have much to go in terms of applications, we do have the ringtones coming up very soon. In tools, we have alarm, Bluetooth, there it is there. What's both the names? Servo and servo, okay. Calculator, standard calculator, calendar, standard calendar. STK, SIM Toolkit, ebook reader. Oh, ebook reader. Oh, I didn't put any files on here. But you have a bookshelf, so you can buy one of these to read books, play FM radio, play some music on, and a torch as well. For the 33 Australian dollar price tag, it's not bad value, but if it could make phone calls, it would have made difference. But anyways, battery saver mode, status, and note. After activating the battery saver mode, your phone's brightness will be low and torch will be off. Good to know. Uh, and status, oh, that's just battery saver mode, and we'll turn both of them off. And that's all in tools. Uh, user profiles is up next, but wait, just services. Uh, yeah, you have internet service, Twitter, Facebook, Yahoo, WhatsApp, Opera Mini, but none of that will work because you need a SIM card for that. Strange that there's no games. Not even Fake Snake or Magic Sushi or anything like that. By the way, both of these appear to have a vibration motor in them. I don't think that's the case. I think that's the speaker doubling as a vibration motor. But once I tear them down, I'll get a better look at it. Now prepare your ears, folks. I mean, you've probably already done so already. You know what's coming. Sim one ringtone. Perfectly synced. Oh God. Yep. Sad. Yep, message tones. Oh God. Oh, oh, wonderful. Did you all enjoy that? Uh, I'm, I'm glad. Oh, I don't think there's any other tones here, no. No, there's not, okay. The cover tone. Oh, dang. Too bad we couldn't change the cover tone to have it do something stupid. We're done. We've looked through everything on these. Showing you the camera quality, big spurker. Not a big spurker, sorry. Talked about the keypad, the LCD quality for the price of $33 Australian. Honestly, can't expect too much for these. They work. They can take photos, you can listen to music, you can't expect too much for $33 nowadays. But at least it was worth having a look at them because of them being fashion weebles. Let's be real also and ask who would actually use one of these? Knowing English as well and seeing that big misprint on there, why would you purchase one of these and want to use this though? I mean, just for the fun of it, yes, okay, but if you were legit wanting to buy one of these and use one, that should straight away put you off, shouldn't it? And also the brand Servo, but you know. Has Servo made anything good apart from the 5710 ripoff? I don't think they have really. They make really oddball stuff. Once again, they're like a tier above welcome. There's nothing much else that I need to show on them. I think it's time that we tore these apart, take a look at the innards and see if there's any differences between the two, apart from the camera, or if we'll find some other hidden things inside of this. But let's power them both off at the exact same time. I hope you all enjoyed that. All right, tear down time. Let's start with the P20 first. Oh shit, should be fairly easy to get into this. Looks like it's just four screws holding it down. We should be able to just pop this plastic cover off and we're in. All right, well, that's fairly easy to get into there. Hold up, there's rust. <laughs> I got free rust. That's good. They're clearly repurposed then. Then what happened to the Fleejo thing then? Oh, there's a vibration motor inside of these. Never mind, there's a vibration motor. Okay, it's just, yep, all right. So, but, but why? Is there two? Hang on, what did the motherboard look like on the Fleejo? I'm baffled now. I'm absolutely baffled. It's the same motherboard in this, except the Fleejo didn't have a vibration motor because that was the big spurker though. So there's the speaker there. Oh, it's a YSYP20. Aha, it's not a big spurker. That's why it's, I mean, it's 
kind of a big one in there, but it's the same sort of size as ones we'd see on usual welcome devices, that sort of thing, just a normal speaker. Uh, it's not a beefy one in that matter. So there's only one flex cable coming down from the top cover to this to connect them all up. That's how they communicate with one another. So I'll take this out. Oh shit, okay. So that's the P20 motherboard just there. Nothing too spectacular to look at, but let me cross reference with the Z Flip. I'm looking at the motherboards and they are, they're exactly the same, except they've put a type C port on the Fleejo one. But yeah, they're both YM20s and they both have the exact same connectors on them. So I'm wondering, are you thinking what I'm thinking? We are going to do an experiment. So let's continue tearing this one apart. Then I'll tear this one apart. And then I'm actually gonna put the motherboard from this into the Fleejo and see if it displays. I wonder if it will and vice versa. But yeah, there's just the keys there with little nubs on them like so. Yeah, not much to look at there. Is it squeaky? No, it's not. All right, well, let's take the top cover off. Honestly, the P20 is the ugliest. There we go. See, comes off nice and easy. The P21 at least has a little bit more sort of flair to it, but uh, let's keep going. This comes off, revealing. Not a whole, oh, no, that's different. Uh, what battery capacity is it? Oh, it's nothing, it's a PBZL. I'll just stick that back there and pretend I didn't see anything. So yeah, on the Fleejo, it wasn't a PCB that goes around it. It was just a PCB at the bottom and then a flex cable that went to a PCB at the top. But there's the camera there for the P20 and that says P20 on there. So we'll leave it in pieces. A lot of people do ask me though, can you put parts from other welcome devices into other welcome devices and most of the time it's largely unanswered because most of the time you can't but sometimes you can and this could be one of those instances let's keep going let's take these apart just in case i could be wrong will we get free rust inside of this one too if you remember back in my sneaker days also when i used to do all that sort of fun stuff we actually had a bug inside one of the soles that was one of those defining moments i can't believe that happened yeah there was a, there was a bug squished into the sole so bug in shoes and free rust in these not bad. Next will be acid or something. Out we go. Off we go, buddy. That's that taken off. YM20, exactly the same thing, and P20 written there. So I think that confirms my suspicions that this is most likely the exact same board in here. So because the P20 is apart, I'll take the shielding off that. But knowing that it has YM20 printed on all the boards, I would say they're all the same. Yeah, see P20 right there. So it's the same thing. So if that's the case, then let's pull the screen off this one and see what the top portion looks like. And then I'll take the shielding off the P20 and then we can do some experiments. Got it. I've got that sad MediaTek ringtone stuck in my head or whatever it was that da, 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 da. sounds that terrible. <laughs> yeah, anyways. And this one looks like that. Oh, it's different. They all have a different top portion. That is so oddball. And the camera code for the P21 is that. Is it the same as that though? So P20 on the left. P21 on the right. XH9260328P20 and then XH87333P20 version 1.0, which indicates that there is a difference between the two, which makes sense because there was definitely a difference between them. Also the earpiece at the top with the torch along there as well. There's the differences right there. The LEDs are built onto that one, whereas the LEDs are on another separate little ribbon cable board thing. Uh, same battery, PBZL. Let's put this one back together because it's putting these internals into the flea joe and seeing if they work that's what i'm interested in all right check to see if that works still it does so at least we have one working well assuming as we have rust on this one it makes it a lot easier to just go in and just pop yep that was incredibly easy to take off. While we have a MediaTek processor in there, it is a MediaTek MT6261DA and a PowerIC just there. And we also have two little tiny chips in there. What are they? They have little cool designs on them, whatever they are. Was that the same processor in the Fleejo? MT6261DA, yep, exactly the same specifications and also the same little chips as well. Let me power on the Fleejo 4. Or Fleelo 4. Are you still alive, buddy? Oh yeah, that's right. You're a welcome. Of course you are. That's what that looks like. Okay, so let's see if this motherboard works in there and vice versa. Oh, okay. So there's six screws that hold this one down. All right, well, out we go, buddy. I review so many devices and take so many apart. I don't remember anything about these devices. Some things I'll, I'll go, oh yeah, I remember that from one device. But most of the time I go into these going, I don't remember what was on that phone. I can't remember, sorry. 
Because <laughs> I, I, I legit don't remember. It's sad when you start to forget Boot Audio 3. Like, how can you forget that, mate? Seriously. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Everything's fine. Okay, yeah, metal weights. <laughs> Now, I'm gonna be very janky about them, you know, being compatible with one another. And by that, I mean, I'll just have the guts basically dangling out of it, which shouldn't be a problem, right? Okay, Fleejo motherboard. The differences between the motherboards, the Fleejo has silver on it, and that's it. So this is the servo going in. And you go, buddy, do you fit? Yeah, it's, it's not exactly the best fit. The flex cable has fit. All right, so I've put the servo motherboard in this. Let's see if it powers on. It does, but the screen's whack. Yeah, the screen's whack. Yeah. <laughs> um, the good news is it half works. <laughs> Look at the little. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Safe to say they aren't quite compatible. We're not finished yet because I'm going to put the flea joe into that one and see if it works. This is mayhem. I'll just put the P20 assembly back together. There we go. Just some casual perseverance of force or something. Unfortunately, some crap got underneath the screens, but... Eh. So, Fleejo motherboard in this. The board actually fits quite solid in there, to be honest. All right. Well, on we go. Do you work? No. <laughs> oh, well... <laughs> Well, kind of. Kind of. Yay! We get to use it this way. Oh, oh, this is confusing. Uh, yes. What happened to the sound, by the way? Yeah, see, the Fleejo had fun and games. This had nothing. There's my little experiment. I wanted to see if you could interchange the parts. And you can. Of course, if I put the P20 board into the P21, it all would have worked. There would have been no changes. But it's just interesting to see that that worked. <laughs> That's right, that's what it sounded like. Now let's just put everything back together and pretend I wasn't here. Uh oh. Oh, it still works. Okay, it still works, never mind. Whoa, oh, I was about to have a slight heart attack, and then I was gonna say, oh, I killed it. I didn't kill it. It lives on, good stuff. Honestly, this video is more about just tearing down the devices and, you know, generally comparing everything more than a review of the actual sort of usage of these devices because they just didn't do too much. No games, no nothing. But I think I'm the only stupid person in the world to look at these things, so... I mean, you folks paid for me to look at these things, so, um, thank you. <laughs> oh, you folks spending your hard-earned money for me to look at these stupid oddball products that no one's ever gonna purchase. I appreciate you. <laughs> oh, you mad lads. You absolute mad lads. Before I seal it down, let's do the double check to see if it still cracks together. And I'll display all the specs for this to the side. It sounds louder now. All the same specifications except the screen. Everything else to me is exactly the same. I don't know if the battery's different or not. It looks to be exactly the same. I think I've said that quite a lot. It's exactly the same, but it is at the end of the day. Same hardware, it's just a different shell. But at least I got to do a dual phone review. Don't think I'll be doing another one of those anytime soon. I'll just put this piece in there. I'll stick that back on there. See, brand new, never used it. Number two can go back into there. And that's it, we're back where we started. Well, folks, that's taking a look at the Servo P20 and the Servo P21 of AliExpress. I hope you enjoyed looking at these oddball things. They're not really oddball, they're just generic things in generic shells. The Flea Joe thing was more interesting. You've made it this far into the video, so I guess you've watched the whole entire thing, so thank you very much for that. But if you had to use timestamps to skip past certain bits and stuff of this not very interesting video, that's completely understandable. That's why they integrated into this video. But a massive thank you to these folks displayed on screen. So we've got our mad lads on the list, Ruffle Daniel, Brian Martins, and Troy Van here. Then we also have Ibrahim Dude, Milan Fabry, Cash, Helmy87, Kenny S, Benzo, Blue Light, Harmony and Ultraviolet, Dennis, Ryu GCM, Official Furious Gamer, YT, Beavers in Space, Oggy Osborne, Cheese the Sylvian, Sherm, and HVH. So thank you very much to all you folks for donating to see these items on this channel. 
appreciate you all. You've done it before I hit 100k, and now I'm finally getting around to this, but thank you all so much for doing all that. And once again, thank you so much to everyone who's got me to 100k as well, and I haven't forgotten about the giveaway. It's just, I was sorting things out and trying to work out what I was going to do for third price, and I've worked it out. But the thing is, if I'm holding a giveaway right now that it's nearing Christmas, I don't want to do international shipping when it's really, really busy. I'd rather wait till the new year to ship out stuff. So I might hold the giveaway soon, but announce proper details when I get to that giveaway and all that sort of stuff. But I'm thinking the giveaway video will also be a channel look back as well, just sort of explaining what happened with, you know, the original channel and just sort of generally rambling and stuff. So hopefully I'll be able to put that out soon. Just working on a couple of things at the moment. I've actually bought some more stuff at AliExpress myself during the whole Black Friday thing. I've bought another cheapo device that I want to take a look at, but I've also bought another storage device. We've looked at eight terabytes. We've looked at 64 terabytes, was it? Get ready for 128 terabytes. But I just wanted to reassure everyone that I haven't forgotten about the giveaway and stuff. It's just, I'm doing a couple of things in real life and working on some stuff and just a bit all over the place. Stay tuned and I'll get it sorted very soon. But thank you all so much for watching this one. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you got a kick out of this. I know I've been looking at a lot of the cheapo basic phones and not the welcome Android devices, but I will get back to that. It's just, we've happened to just choose a lot of these ones, but yeah. As always, please take care, stay safe, be good people, and I'll see you all in the next video, which should be something. Working things out, don't worry. Stay tuned and uh, you'll just see things happen as they do. Thank you all so much for the 100K, really do appreciate it. And I should be responding to all the comments that have said thank you, but there's so many of them. Just know I really do appreciate it and it means the world to me. And I've also got verified now too, which is exciting. I now have a little tick next to my name. I've joined the club now. I wish that I could be like the cool kids. Well, I am one of the cool kids now. I just haven't got my play button. You know, I have to wait for YouTube to make it and manufacture it and put my name on it and stuff. So, yeah. Otherwise, everyone, keep being awesome, and I'll see you all next time. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.